What is up guys, Karataka here, and today I'm here with another Digimon deck profile. Today we'll be going over the Deva deck from EX05. Uh, this deck is actually like another Zook type of deck that uh, you know, Digimon has been introducing more and more recently. And I think their boss monster is really, really strong, but uh, their, the support, it's a little bit... It's a little bit. It's a bit. It's a bit of a weird, weird deck to play. Uh, you guys will find out when you guys also play as well. But it is um, pretty decent at making counter plays. So you'll see what I mean when I go over the deck. So let's go over the Digitamas first. So for the Digitamas, we're running four of the Mother Reaper. Uh, we are running Mother Reaper because it is a white Digitama. So what that means is you'll be able to play your white option cards without uh, early game, without even if you don't have any Deva on the, Devas on the board, because for the white options, you still will need to have the requirement of having white card. And if you don't have a Deva on the board to mitigate the first text, then you won't be able to use it. So that's why we're running the Mother Reapers. Uh, sometimes you won't need to hatch this if you are going second and you don't need to play the option. Uh, so make sure you guys don't clog up your raising area with Mother Reaper just by hatching it for no reason. Because you will need to hatch it and have a turn afterwards to push it out. So, depends on you guys, but we're running this anyway. We're running at 4 just, just in case, but you, you probably won't need 4. Alright, so next we are going to go over the new boss monster of the deck. We're running 4 Fanglong Mon. So it's got a few abilities. Uh, first ability is on play and on attacking. So. By returning four cards with Deva or four Sovereigns from trash to the bottom of your deck, for each card returned, all your opponents that you want to get minus 4,000 for the end of turn. And then when attacking, for each of your four Sovereign trait uh, cards, trash the top card of your opponent's uh, secret stack. And then third ability is on all turns, this card is not affected by your opponent's Digimon. So most important, I, I think, is the last ability not being able to be affected by your opponent's Digimon is really good, especially since there's a lot of uh, field controlling Digimon on the in the game right now. And just having immunity against those is really good. Especially since if you evolve on top of a Sovereign, you'll be able to, you, you'll get, get the overflow. So having one less way to die will, will definitely help you out. So it is still prone to uh, option cards, so that's not great, but at least you have defense against something. Alright, next let's go over the level 6s. So we're running 3 of each of the Sovereigns. So these are actually really good because they are Ace cards. I mean, I guess they're double edged Swords because they have Overflow 4. They all do different things. So Azulamon returns a level 5 or below and then unsuspends one of your Devas or for sovereigns. The Tiger lets you play a Deva if it's security checked during your opponent's turn. So this one this one is I think is the least useful but it still has its uses. The Tsuhaman lets you pop something six care or less on either side of the board and then you can get security check. And then the Ibawuman also lets you rest a opponent's Digimon for every one of your Devas or four sovereigns. And then they can't unsuspend during their unsuspend phase. So Pretty good. All, all of them. All of the rest of the opponents, the rest of the demon can't unspend during the unspend phase. So I think the the turtle is, is gonna be pretty good, and I think the Phoenix is also pretty good for pushing damage. This one's pretty good for stalling your opponent. So those are the level sixes. Let's go over the level fives now. So for the first day of our running, we're actually running two of the Antilamon. So this is the only non-EX5 Deva running. So as Alliance, you can tap one of your other Digimon to get that Digimon's power and get a security check. And then at the end of the attack, if you have three or less security, you can recover one. So running, really running this just because I think this Antilamon is better than the other Antilamon we have from EX5. And I think be able to push for two damage for a decent number is pretty good as well as helping you recover is also pretty good. So, running two of those. You can actually pump this up to three if you want, but I think two is, is fine. And for the rest of the Devas, we're running two of each of them. So, two of each of the blue ones. So I just thought I'll explain again. Uh, for the rest of the Devas, 
they all have the ability of on play draw one and then you put a Deva from your hand into the raising area if you don't have it on your field or in your trash. So th this is the, like the main engine of the deck and it just kind of like cycles. So they all come with another ability though and they all have inherent abilities. Mihiramon's ability is when uh, one of your Digimon is played, trash one of your opponent's illusion source. And then the inherent ability is when this card attacks, if it is a four sovereign or a god beast, you can get one memory back. For the Majiramon, it's whenever you play a cost one or above option card, you can get one, option, one memory back. And then the inherent skill is the same as Mahiramon's. For the green ones, all they, they give inherit for piercing, which is not great, but it's okay. So for the Vajramon, it's uh, get one memory when you play an option that's one, or co one cost or more. For the pig, it's after one of your Digimon survives a battle, you can make this card active again. And for the Kumibitamon, it's whenever a Digimon, opponent's Digimon is rested, you can draw one. So this doesn't have to be by an effect. So if your opponent attacks and you have this on the board, you can just draw one. So I think this one's pretty good. For the black ones, we're running two of the other tiger. So this one is blocker, and it also gives blocker. And this one has delay, but the inherent skill also gives blocker to your god beast as well as for sovereigns. They're okay, they're okay. For the red ones, I think these ones are pretty good because they all give security check plus one. So security check plus one, and then this one gives you a draw one on deletion. This one gets you one memory when uh, on the leash chain if your opponent has a tamer. And then this one lets you delete something 5k or less. So this one is a little bit more situational, but getting one security check is, is good. Inheriting a security check is good. And you can actually use these in conjunction with the Deva option. So this option lets you look at the top three cards of your deck and you can either put a Deva into one of your four sovereigns or Deva's source, or you can add one to your hand. So you can stack up your security checks with this, and that's, that's pretty good. You can also stack the security checks into your Antilamon, which is also okay. So we're running four of these. And this, uh, by having four of these, if you are kind of bricking in your opening hand, you can hatch a Mother Reaper, play one of these, grab a day with your hand, pass turn, and then you'll be leaving your opponent at one. So this is one of the plays that you can do. And one of the reasons why you're running the Mother Reaper. So you choke your opponent at one memory. All right, next we are running the Feng Longmon option card. So Sovereign Ultimate for Formation. When you, uh, so this really is, if you have a Deva or Four Sovereigns, you can ignore the color requirements. But you can also reduce the cost for this card for every Deva or Sovereign, four Sovereign traits with different name in your trash. So they have to have a different name. And you'll be able to reduce the cost. So since we're running, the rest of the deck is pretty much all of them. It's uh, pretty easy to get the cost reduction going, but reducing it by 12 is pretty hard. Your, your opponent will have to not to be able to kill you pretty for a long time in order for you to get the cost reduction by 12. But most of the time you'll be doing like six or seven cost reduction, so that's still pretty good. And then the security effect is you can return a Fang Lam on uh, from your trash to hand, and then you can add this card to your hand. So it's okay, it's okay. Uh, next, we will be running two Genai. Genai is really good in this deck because you can push out your sovereigns from your raising area and then use it for your blast evolutions. Uh, you can skip over your opponent's when attacking abilities with this, which is really good. And you can also search for a, another tamer with, with, with on play for this one. So it's it's not bad. It's not bad. You won't be able to search for level three, but because we're not running into level threes, but I think being able to push out a Deva after your opponent declares an attack is is really good. And last but not least, we're running two heroes. We're running Hero just because he's pretty much the most generic uh, memory setter we have in the game right now. Whenever a level five attacks, 
you can rest this tamer to give it 2,000 power. So it, that pretty much applies to the whole deck. There's only level five or above, so you will be able to give it power. And one of the problems this deck has is crashing, because even though you can get security checks, we don't really have anything that gives power. So bumping your Devas to 14K really helps out the deck a lot. And bumping your Fang Lomon to 17K on attack will pretty much make you immune to all opponent's Digimon's uh, security battles. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this deck. This deck is pretty interesting. I think uh, as long as we get more David type like cards in the future, this deck can have potential to get stronger. Uh, just because the core engine right now is okay, but if we have more like amazing cards like Antilamon, like more utility, then I think this deck will be stronger. But I think being able to just have a lot wide variety of cards to blast evolve into during your opponent's turn is is good. It's, it's really good. But there's just a lot of ways to play around it, and there uh, most of the time you will be giving your opponent more memory than you want. So that's one of the problems. And also keep in mind, you're not forced to blast evolve these. You can choose to slap these out by hard casting if you really need to. So don't, if you have like nothing to play in your hand, don't pass turn and do nothing. You can hinder your opponent a little bit by slapping these down. So yeah, this, that's pretty much it for this deck, guys. Please let me know if you have any questions. But that's pretty much for this deck profile, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is Karaku, and I'll see you guys next time.